Good morning. Welcome to our morning devotions. It is Monday morning, June the 29th, if you can believe that or not. And here we are uh, beginning a new week, and uh, it is Monday. I'm coming to you from the office here at Center Baptist Church, trying to get the Monday started early this morning to get some stuff done, and uh, just came on in here in the office. So uh, coming to you from the office this morning uh, in the book of Colossians. So grab your Bible this morning and uh, go to Colossians chapter 1, and we're going to look again at verse 15. We're going to go all the way down through verse number 18, Lord willing. So good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for being a part. Uh, do leave a comment so I can come back and say hello to you. Thank you again for being a part. I am humbled, to say the least, and I mean that as sincerely as I know how. Thank you for being a part of these morning devotions. And uh, we're making our way through the book of Colossians. Be reminded that Paul is writing this letter to the church at Colossae. It is a city that uh, was just 100 miles uh, from Ephesus. They were in Asia Minor. It is, uh, Ephesus was a city that Paul had preached in for over a year and a half and established a church there and never went to Colossae, but had sent Epaphras to start a church there. And it had flourished and grown uh, probably in five to 10 years there. And then Paul, of course, we know as we read to the book of Acts, is imprisoned, finds himself in Rome, and is there in that Rome prison where he is under house arrest that he writes many of his letters. And one of those letters is the, to the church at Colossae. When Epaphras came to greet Paul, he brought him greetings that the church was flourishing and doing well, but he also brought in some troubling news that they were being influenced by a heresy, a false teaching, a false doctrine that was seeking to minimize the person of Jesus. I'm telling you, I thought about this a lot over this past weekend. The more and more that we live is the more and more we will see people try to minimize the person of the Lord Jesus. Even our churches, if we're not careful, we will be influenced to try to minimize the person of the Lord Jesus. You want to get some people's feathers ruffled a little bit, you mention the Lord Jesus Christ. It's one thing to say our Father. It's one thing to say our God. But when you mention the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Paul writes this letter to bring their focus back on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, but I need that. I was thinking about it this morning, it being Monday morning. I don't just need that in the culture that I'm living in, in the world you and I are living in with all the mess, the chaos, the suffering, um, the uh, phenomenons that are happening. I mean, we're being affected by a dust storm from Africa, for heaven's sakes. I've got to get my focus, my attention, my direction locked in to the Lord Jesus Christ. But let's get even more practical. I need to get my focus on him every day. Beginning this Monday morning, I need the book of Colossians to remind me to get my focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean? That means I begin my day with him. I pray and seek his face. I read his word. I think about him. I, I think about what he would have me do on the job that I'm on right now. And so we pray God will help us to do that. I'm reminded of what David Jeremiah said, and um, I, I wrote it down here. Let's see if I can hear it is. Um, last week, I shared this quote that David Jeremiah um, began in the book of Colossians, and I'll find I had it right here. Here it is. It's in the book that I'm... Listen, listen to what he says. When life gets confusing... And once sure goals and convictions become fuzzy, push aside nagging worries and lesser thoughts and lock your gaze on God's son. When life gets confusing and once sure goals and convictions become fuzzy, push aside nagging worries and lesser thoughts. Do you see that? 
and lock your gaze on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we're going to do this morning in these next few moments. So pray with me as we lock our gaze on the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for your word. Speak to us this morning. Thank you for those that have joined on. God bless them. And those that will join later by watching later, either on YouTube, God have your way in each one of our lives and help us to lock our gaze on you. In Jesus' name, amen. We are in chapter one, and I shared with you verse 15 on Friday. Verses 15 down through verse number 18 is one of the greatest passages in all of the Bible, uh, particularly the New Testament, as it relates to the Lord Jesus Christ, of his deity, of his power, of his authority, of him being the one and only. What's happening is in the world we're living in and the world Paul was living in, they were seeking to say this, Jesus is just one among many. In other words, that he is on the same plane and level playing field as Muhammad, as Buddha, as any other, the Indian gods of Hindu, that he's on the same level playing field. It's okay if you want to worship your God because, hey, we're all in this thing together. But the reality is that's not true. I wrote this down in my, in my journal this morning. There are no other rivals. There is no one that rivals the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul would write one of the greatest hymns or, or lessons, if you will, directed to the Colossians, but also directed to us in the power of the Holy Spirit, of the power and authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's join together. Look with me, verse 15, 16, 17, and 18. The Bible says he's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. We talked about that, that Jesus makes God visible and that he's the firstborn doesn't mean that he is was created by God, but he's preeminent over all creation. He goes, he goes deeper. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. That word preeminence, it, it speaks of superiority. It, it speaks of being chief, being leader. I wrote down this, these few uh, words there that list to that. It speaks of being the one and only, uh, of the only one that can that is to be magnified. Paul was saying to us, there is no one else like Jesus. He's to have the highest rank, the highest superiority. He is the only one. That was important to the church at Colossae to hear this because they were hearing false prophets say, well, he's a created being. He's on the same level playing field as angels. But what does Paul say inspired by the Holy Spirit? that he is created all things, whether they on earth, visible, invisible, whether thrones, dominions, or principalities. Those are words that speak of angels. Principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. That all things consist in him. Here's what he was saying. He said he is the chief. He is the greatest. There is no one beside him. He means he's before all things, over all things, created all things, and did all things for himself. He is the only one over it all. Let's, pack, let's unpack it for a moment. All things were created that are in heaven and in earth by him. Now that shocks some people even of Paul's day because some of them on Paul's day had known Jesus. They had known him to live on this earth. And for them to hear that, that he was the one that created. How is that possible? Well, we have the Genesis account where it says, let us make man in our image. That it is God the Son. He was there before creation. He was the one that spoke it into existence. He's the one that brought it all together. 
and he's the one that holds it all together. He became flesh and dwelt among us. But he did not just, just begin to live when he was born there in, in Bethlehem's manger. Oh, no. He, he is God the Son, and he was with God there in creation. He is the one, through the instrument of God the Son, spoke this world into existence, created all that is around, and holds everything in his hands. When it talks about he, he, he holds everything, people talk about the law of gravity and all the, the laws that are in nature that are holding things together. But the reality is, it's not a what, it's a who. He literally does have everything in his hands. As I was doing my study and devotion time this morning, one of the gentlemen talked about the creation and, and how powerful and, and, and how marvelous creation is. When you think about this, a human chromosome, one human chromosome has 20 billion bits of information. If I was to be put in a single volume of books, 4,000 volumes would have to be created to contain the information in one human chromosome. When you think about the fact of how the earth is situated, how the earth rotates the way it does, how that if we were just a little bit closer to the sun, we would burn up, and if we were a little bit further away from the sun, we would freeze to death. We Did you know we're in the optimum position for life to exist here on this earth? Did you know there's a canopy that oversees that no other planet has that we be able to breathe in and breathe out, that we be able to exist and live? Who did that? The Lord Jesus Christ. Who holds it all together? The Lord Jesus Christ. Who's making all these things? Listen, when we see the weather phenomenons, when we see the earthquakes, when we see the fires, who's holding all that together? Who's causing these things? It is the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says he is above all and in all. He created all things and all things are for him. He is the head of the church, the beginning of the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. He's over creation. He's over all that is in the world that he consists of. He's over the church. That's the, the church is the body of believers from time immortal, from the beginning of the church there in Acts till the Lord calls us home in glory. He is over the church. He is the head, the leader, the preeminent one. Listen, it's not my church. It's not your church. It's his church. And what gives him the right? He's the firstborn from the dead. What that again, that word firstborn just means priority first, the the have the her first place. He is the one that came forth out of the grave. So wait a minute, what about Lazarus? What about those other folks that Christ resurrected? They eventually died. But Jesus, when he arose from the grave, he did not die. He lives forevermore. And he is one and only. We could go deeper. A lot of the guys that I read did. But let me just summarize what Paul's trying to say. There is no angel. There is no other God. There's no other earthly ruler. There is nothing that's created there is nothing that consists greater than the Lord Jesus Christ. He is above all. He is in all. He created it all. And he holds it all together. He brought it all together. He spoke it all into existence. And he holds it all in his hands. He has the preeminence or the first place, the priority. So let's, again, for when I share in my own morning devotions, I like to get practical. And so I'll begin to ask myself questions in my journal. So here's what I ask myself this morning. Is this true? Yes, it is. He 
has the preeminence. He is over all and in all, created it all, and he is supreme over all things and all people and over all creation. But here's the question that I put down in my journal. Michael, is it true of you that he is first in your life? And I would want to say to you, absolutely. But I must confess that every day I have to surrender myself to him and make him first in my life. And by that I mean I know I'm saved, but I've got to get my focus upon him. You say, well, that's easy for you. You're a pastor. You know what I would say to you? I am blessed beyond measure to be able to study God's word, to be able to pray and talk to people and about the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to say to you, even in that, I'm human, I'm flesh, and I have to fight through to not do anything in my own strength, in my own flesh, in my own motivation. I've got to make sure that I'm keeping my attention, my focus on the Lord Jesus Christ as I make my way. But can I tell you something? The same is true whether you work in a factory. This morning as I came in early, and I'm an early guy, and and, and when I worked in the public and, and run a printing press for over uh, 10 years and worked at Matthews Printing for 12 years, run a printing press for 10 years, many, many mornings I would head into work four or five o'clock in the morning Love those early mornings, and, and, and I thought about it this morning as I was coming in early, and, and the lady at the restaurant where I got my coffee and my biscuit, and uh, the folks at the gas station, and then I saw the wood preserve as I was coming in, and I thought to myself, no matter whether I'm doing what I'm doing, which I'm blessed to do, or you're where you're at, and you're going to your job today, if you and I are going to be blessed, if you and I are going to walk in victory, we must make sure and say, Jesus, I want you to be first today. I know you're my Savior. I know you're my Lord. But today in my life, I want to seek first the kingdom of heaven. I want to make sure that you're preeminent over everything in my life, that I surrender. I like what one writer said this morning. Knowing this, that he's over all, that I need to surrender to him every day, every moment, because of knowing who he is and what he has done, the little and the big things, the past, present, and future, every area of my life to surrender to him. You say, preacher, you don't know what I'm walking through. You're right, I don't, but he does, and he's over it all. He has all power and authority. The most important thing you can do when you're studying the word of God like we're doing is don't forget the context of where a passage is in. So we're verses 15 through 18, but it's in the context of that first chapter where Paul has already said, I want you to be strengthened by the power of Christ. I want you to have knowledge of God and that I want you to have the give thanks unto him and that I want you to have all patience and long suffering with joy. And here's what, here's what I thought this morning. I wonder how many people um, went to their jobs, go to their jobs, including this pastor, with joy on a Monday morning. How do we have joy on a Monday morning? Well, I'm going to tell you one of the ways Paul would say, lock our gaze on the Lord Jesus Christ. And no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're walking through, no matter what's ahead of you, no matter what's happening right now, Jesus Christ is over it all. And whatever we're walking through is under his feet, which means he has all authority and power. And we, if we're going to have joy on a Monday morning, must surrender all of that to him and say, Lord, I'm going to seek first the kingdom of heaven today. I'm going to make you the number one priority in my thoughts, in my actions, in my attitude. And I'm going to lock my gaze on you. And when I do that, there's joy, there's strength. Because I'm telling you, there are no rivals when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Aren't we grateful? Aren't we grateful that if you're saved and I'm saved today, aren't we grateful that we have given, we have pledged our allegiance 
to the greatest of all, none other will ever be nor will ever even compare to the Lord Jesus Christ, who was with God, but then made himself as come in the form of, of flesh, lived, died on a cross for our sins, rose again the third day, ascended to the Father, sent the Holy Spirit, and is coming one day to take us home. That is the Jesus that we serve, and not just then, but every single day, this is true of him. Let it be true in our hearts. Because here's what I know. I can read something and go, woo-hoo, that's awesome. But what I need to do is say, Lord, sink that into my heart so that whatever I'm facing today, I will let you have the priority and the preeminence because you're over it all and you hold it all and you hold me in your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for just the power of the Holy Spirit working through the inspiration as you inspired Paul to pin down. And Lord, I cannot even begin to dig the depths out of these few verses. But can we just, Lord, today say in simple terms, Jesus is over it all. Thank you that there are no other rivals and that we have pledged our allegiance to you. But help us today to lock our gaze on you. And Lord, we do that through prayer, through the word of God, through our attitude, through our thought life. There are people today that will be working in factories. There are people today that are on their way to work right now and they're watching as they or listening as they drive. Others are getting ready for work. Others will have work from home, but there'll be things going on. Whatever they do, God, let it be done with joy, with strength and long suffering, knowing that we now being reminded that we serve a risen Savior who is in all, above all, and holds all things by his hands. And may we lean into you today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, thanks for joining in this morning. Come back and leave a comment if you hadn't yet. I would love to hear from you and come back. Hey, share this today on your page. Um, again, not because I'm a great teacher. No, but we're in this thing together. Um, we're learning the word of God together. Who else needs to uh, be encouraged? Who else needs to hear from God's word? Share it today. But also, hey, let God use you today. I know it's Monday. I know there's a lot going on. Um, I found myself overwhelmed this morning as I thought through my day of all the things that I want to get accomplished in, in the meetings and things like that. Um, on throughout, even to this evening, got several meetings this evening that are very important to me. And just as I think through that, I can get my, are y'all, are y'all, I don't know if y'all are that way. So I just say, okay, Lord, let me get my focus on you. Let me get my mind focused on you. And the joy comes as we follow after Jesus. I pray that for you today. Be encouraged. Share this, share a prayer request. Love to pray with you. Uh, look forward to being with you tomorrow morning, seven o'clock, as we continue through this great letter of focusing our attention on the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you through this day. And I pray you have a great day. God bless. See you tomorrow.